The sky accounts for such a large volume of space that it seems improbable that no organism has evolved to live entirely in the air. Science has found life in the most arid deserts, the deepest oceans, the coldest tundra, active volcanoes, and just about any other location you can think of. No matter how far underground we go, there is always some sort of ecology. There are even terrestrial organisms that can survive space. Yet for some reason, there is no atmosphere biome. Aside from some microbacteria and certain fungi that are carried into the sky through evaporation, storms, and wind, so why aren't there any creatures that live completely aerial lives? Before we jump to that conclusion, we should be certain we haven't missed anything. Sky beasts are cryptids that gained popularity in the mid-1900s, and were described as being large, jellyfish-like organisms floating in the sky. Sky beasts are usually thought of as being some sort of aquatic type creature that is adapted for the air rather than the ocean. They can range from whales to large amoeba, flying serpents and fairies and wisps of intelligent balls of light. Though there are certain instances of aerial organisms in folklore across the world, the idea mainly gained traction with the dawn of flight and the explosion of UFO sightings since the early 1900s. One of the most famous cases of a UFO sighting was by Kenneth Arnold on June 1947. The term flying saucer was coined by the reporter of this case. Kenneth saw nine flying discs and said that they were sort of like sky jellyfish. Oddly enough, the common person seems to be more willing to believe in aliens as the explanation for UFOs before any sort of terrestrial sky creature. In dissecting these UFO sightings, many of the reports share a similar observation that whatever they witnessed appeared to be intelligent in an organic way. A few researchers have put forward some possible explanations for how the structure of these life forms would work, and keep in mind, there is a good chance that a new archaea of life would likely be needed to classify these creatures. Low density organisms, wisps of light or energy, non-corporeal entities, flying serpents, all could account for a diverse sky biome yet to be discovered by science. In 1955, Countess Wasilko Sarecki proposed that the atmosphere was home to large bladder beasts that glowed with energy wrapped around a solid core. When moving, their shape changes to a rod, a common shape for UFO sightings. The amount of planes, nuclear testing, satellites, weather balloons, and various other machines we have in the sky could easily scare off these creatures. Or perhaps it's the disturbances that have caused them to start investigating the source. Hence, all the phenomena in the air and UFO sightings. There would be no reason for humans to evolve the eyesight necessary to see any of these sky cryptids that can easily be camouflaged or only visible to other spectrums of light. The recent reveal from the CIA, Pentagon, and Air Force about UFO sightings certainly brings this question back up. The CIA has talked before about non-corporeal entities in declassified documents and the Air Force has thousands of cases of confirmed unidentified objects in many reports and videos. UFOs are not unique to America and occur all over the world. Humans occupy such a small percentage of the planet, and discoveries of new and incredible organisms happen every year. If we don't know what we're looking for, it's not likely we'll find it. James Trevor Constable claimed there were sky amoeba, he called critters. These are images he took that supposedly depict these critters. He claimed that they had to be seen with infrared lighting, but under some circumstances they reflect visible light and this accounts for random UFO sightings. If these sky creatures or sky critters don't exist, science still has to explain why there is a vast, open, and unoccupied space, when every other biologic niche has been occupied by at least some forms of highly specialized organisms. It doesn't seem like the sky should be the exception. And perhaps one day, biologists and scientists will come out with the discovery of sky beasts in the missing ecology.